Welcome to what's not quite the last Schwarzen Weiss video blog. A bit more about that later. So, what can I say? It's been a little bit late in getting this to you in the same way. It was a, bit, a little bit late in my getting my reports to you it's because it took me a couple of days just to get it over the euphoria of uh, winning that game. It's absolutely amazing. The, the atmosphere that I'd had at the Bavarian Beer House was just outstanding. It was such an emotional evening, completely nerve shredding for almost two hours. And then that moment of exhilaration, Mario Goetze scored that absolutely fantastic goal. Probably the best winning goal in Germany's four World Cups. No, nothing against Andy Bremer in 1990, Gerd Müller in 74, and uh, Helmut Rahn, their boss in 54. But that was just out of this world. The, the way how it actually came about, the skill, the turn, the shot. Amazing. So uh, took me a couple of days to get over it. Props, by the way, to the Bavarian Beer House for putting up a really good atmosphere and making it a great evening for all concerned. Of course, we have to thank the team for delivering the, the final piece to that puzzle. And uh, it's unbelievable. I'm wearing a shirt now that's now out of date. It's got three stars on it. I've ordered my new shirt with the fourth star. Should be coming fairly soon. Also with the FIFA Winner Shield. That's what I think. You know, you look at this shirt and you think, it looks a little bit weird with this chevron. I think the designers had a long-term plan in mind. Because when you put that FIFA Winner Shield here, it looks absolutely fantastic. You'll see that. I'll probably post up a video with that new shirt once I receive it. So, what can I say about the game? First half, end to end, Argentinians far more attacking than I thought they would be. And everyone had their heart in their mouths when Tony Cruz played that header back intended towards Manu Neuer and Gonzalo Higuain got himself almost in with a chance. I thought, but then the Green Goblin was there. He stood and probably uh, put Higuain off. Higuain, I think, was terrified of him for the rest of the game. And uh, that was the end of that chance. I then, of course, had the ball in the back of the net. Good yard or so offside Higuain again and he got this feeling it wasn't going to be Argentina's day and uh, as the game wore on things were even out it was a real war of attrition and then second half not very many chances made Andre Schurler made uh, Romero make a couple of saves over the course of the, uh, the 90 minutes in the first part of extra time but Argentina then started to really close things down and you could see they were parking that big blue bus they looked a little bit like Chelsea in a way and of course when I think of Chelsea it reminded me of a really horrible day back in May 2012. So there was this big blue box bus beginning to reverse into position and you think, this is going to be penalties, I can't take this. And of course, the National Mannschaft have won the last four penalty shoots that have been in in World Cup finals. And you think, well, you know what? If that, something bad is going to happen, it's going to happen at some point. And you know what? It's going to be a World Cup final, isn't it? I just really didn't want penalties. In the past, you think, when Germany are playing, they've got these five solid penalty takers. And I've said it before in my blog, when I wrote an article which I might have uh, posted up to the Brazilian Fanatic, it was actually re-aired a week or so ago, just before the semi-final against Brazil. And I voiced my fear in that, that this new current bunch of German players, because they've seen as more skillful, more light on the ball, with a slightly silkier touch and that kind of almost Brazilian style, the negative aspect of this is that when it comes to solidity in your your basics like penalties, there's there are going to be slight problems. Then we've seen this. We saw this with uh, FC Bayern, of course, with uh, some bad penalty misses. Not all of them by German players, obviously, you know, but uh, you got this feeling that it's going to be a bit flaky. It's not like the old days when you'd have the likes of. Mateus and Bremer and Litbarski, those guys step up. You, as soon as you saw those guys stand there, you just knew they weren't going to miss. But apart from, say, Thomas Müller and or, if called upon, uh, Manu Neuer, there's a bit of flakiness there. You see Tony Cross, you see Philipp Lahm, even uh, the likes of uh, Bastian Schweinsteiger. They're, of course, he missed one in the Champions League final. And you have this nagging doubt about penalties. I really didn't want that dreaded, horrible Elfmeter season. So when you saw that in the 113th minute, that brilliant run, this time you can see he was constantly trying to do that, Andre Schroeder. He, he brought that same energy and effervescence that he did with all the other games that he came on the sub. 
but you could see at this time there was some real concerted movement. There was some punch behind there. This, this was going to happen, and that cross, absolutely beautiful, but what about that finish? What about that finish? Chester down, brilliant taking a swivel, left foot, bang, in, right inside of the net. Absolutely amazing. And I know I had slated Mario Goetze earlier on in this tournament because he didn't look great against Ghana for the lap part of that game, even though he scored in that game. Against Algeria, he was absolutely dreadful. And I did say he was never going to be a good starter, but as an impact sub, and here it proved again. He came on for Miroslav Klose. Hats off to Klose again, because this was an absolutely fantastic performance overall by him to score those two goals and uh, break Ronaldo's record. Didn't have the greatest game in the final, had a few half chances. Maybe the closer of old might have uh, managed to get on the end of one of those, but a round of applause he got. But from inside the ground and from where we are, where we were in London, Everybody knew what a great, everybody knows what a great servant Miroslav Klose was to German football. And he went out on a high. He finally got that medal. He's now got the set. He had one runners up medal from 2002, two bronze medals from 2006 and 2010. And finally he gets the gold one. So he completes the set. And no one deserves it more than him. To move on to some of the other players who made a great uh, show on that day, of course, Klose, I've mentioned, good to the goal scorer. Bastian Schweinsteiger, what, what can you say? The guy was again at the end of some poor press at the end of last season. It was not seen to be all, not quite with it. Then he had the injury problems with uh, which added to the whole uh, really negative equation. And people really started to question whether he had the, the guts to see this through. Man, did he show some guts in that final. He was absolutely clattered in that second period of extra time in particular. I mean, he was butchered by these guys. And this referee, he was seen in a couple of earlier games, so he would be a bit lenient towards the Argentinians. And you saw it here. There should have been, it should have been like 2000, like 1990 all over again. Argentina should have really been down to nine men. It wasn't a massively dirty game, but right at the end, you, you saw that. And Schweinsteiger, blood pouring on his face from the cut underneath his eye. That was absolutely... Those photos that you get from that, just legendary. This was the warrior. This was the warrior. Of course, everyone talks about Schweinsteiger for those great moments. But for me, the man of the match was Jérôme Boateng. Absolutely amazing. If someone is going to score the goal of their life, that would be Mario Goetze. But if someone was to have the defensive performance of his life, didn't put a step wrong, Every challenge was perfectly timed, every interception was perfectly made, every clearance was well hit. Jérôme Boateng went, won my man of the match hands down. Everyone will be looking at Goetze, they'll be looking at Schweinsteiger. I looked at Boateng, who's a stalwart of this side, and he has in the past as well got a bit of stick for some of his performances. But overall in this tournament, I think he played really, really well. And that final, that was just the cherry on top of the cake. Absolutely barnstorming performance. That was epic from Boateng. I think the, the whole team were fantastic. And Joachim Löw, I've said this before about Joachim Löw, is that uh, I'd had my doubts from 2012. We all knew what happened in 2012 when... In that semi-final against Italy, he'd make all those tactical changes. He'd put Tony Cross in a weird position, and uh, the whole focus of the game was Andrea Pirlo. I did have nightmares before this final that uh, he'd put Philip Lahm on Lionel Messi and uh, create some whole marking effort on him, and the whole game would circulate around that. But no, this time he trusted in his eleven. Well, what would have been the eleven were it not for the unfortunate pre-match injury to Sami Kadira. I thought, oh no, not, not again. We're not going to have this again. But the team showed what a strong team they were. They, kept, they got over this. Kramer, Christoph Kramer started the game and oof, what an unlucky 30 minutes he had. Clouted on the side of the head. That was a really nasty, cynical piece of work again by Ezekiel Garay. What was he up to turning his shoulder into a guy's head? That I don't know. He was out for 15 minutes. 
he didn't even know where he was. He couldn't remember the first half hour of that game, could Kramer. But uh, that was, again, another horrible moment. So Love was left with no real midfield options. Uh, if you were to pick a like for like to play with that same setup, the only real alternative he had in the locker was uh, Matthias Ginter, who hadn't played a minute in this tournament. So what was he going to do? And I was expecting this some sort of panicky reverse, rever reverting to type, as it were. I was thinking, look, Kadira is out. Kramer is out. Is the coach going to panic here? Is he going to go back to switching Lahm back into that midfield position and bringing on a, another centre-back? So put Boateng out to the right again and bring Per Matisak and put him in the middle. When I saw that board go up with uh, Kramer's number on it, I was expecting to see that number 17 appear on the other side. When I saw the number 9, I was just... That was the moment for me. I've, I've said this in the report that you might have read already, but this for me was the epiphany. This was the epiphany that Jürgi Löw had finally understood that the criticism of him was not directed at him, perhaps personally, but at the way he had been wedded to his previous ideas, this 4-3-3, playing Lahm in the centre for the defensive midfield. This proved that, yeah, he had listened. And when Andre Schuller came on, and we knew what would happen then, Tony Kroos would drop back a little bit deeper into that more defensive position. Mesut Ozil would go into a more reasonable, what I'd say, more ha a happier position for him in the middle of the mid offensive midfield. Schuller would step out left, and Thomas Muller on the right stood with a mirror close up front. And I thought this was really bold. This was positive. And this was bold without being stupid. And that was the moment that, you know what? I fell in love with those tactics at that moment. Of course, I think the, the coach will return to the 4-3-3. He'll return to bringing Lahm back into that uh, midfielder's role again. I'm sure he will. But at this point in time, to win this tournament against this opposition, under that pressure, to respond like that and not revert to type, I take my hat off to the Maharishi Yogi. And I will still never move away from my seeing him as the Maharishi Yogi, but this time, yeah, I will, I'll concede perhaps he is smarter than the average bear, this Yogi. And uh, hats off to him again. And uh, I did say this in a previous blog that uh, if we win this tournament, in fact, you know what? I said this at the time of the Algeria game when we were still playing 4-3-3. But I did say at the time, and I'll hold true to this, they'll eat my hat if we came through this and won this tournament. Now, of course, I'm not going to eat my hat literally, because that would be stupid. For us, for, so it would be a waste of a hat, and it would be a waste of money. So, w one of my uh, keen readers, Anna, has, uh, is, is really pressing me on my eating my hat. So, I've told her, I'm not going to eat my hat quite literally. It's uh, more of a symbolic thing, so I'm probably going to make a shape of a hat out of a pie. So I'll make a hat, and I will eat it, and I will apologise profusely to Yogi Love, to the Maharishi Yogi, for doubting him. Because he, in the end, pulled it through, and we have now got that fourth star, which we can rightly place on top of the Adler here. We have now won it the same amount of times as Italy, and 2018 in Russia. Let's go on and get that fintesh down, and let's uh, match Brazil. Because I think this team has now got the makings of a great team. 2016, we can go on and win the European Championships. 2018, yeah, a few of the older guys might retire by then, say the likes of Schweinsteiger, the likes of Lahm. But we'll still have the likes of Thomas Müller, we'll have Schürrler, we'll have Mario Goetze, we'll have Julian Draxler, and we'll have all the stream of great youngsters that are coming through at the moment. And this is an ongoing stream. And I really do think that, like Spain did between 2008, and 2012, with the three major tournaments in a row. I really do think this Germany team can really dominate the game if they stick to their guns and play this with the same style and use the same approach. We can take this success through. Jürgen Löw could win the European Championship in 2016. That would then make him one of the most, probably, in terms of overall results, the most successful national trainer ever. 
Uh, take him ahead of Helmut Schoen. Helmut Schoen, of course, won the two trophies. He won the European Championships in 72, and he won the World Cup in 74, and was a runner-up in, in the European Championships in 76. But Jürgen Löw has uh, now taken Germany to two World Cups, achieved a third place and a winner's medal, a semi-final in another one, and a runner-up spot in 2008. So overall, if he can take the team to what is projected to be his last tour of duty in France in 2016, I think we should definitely qualify for that. The qualifying criteria now is so easy. I think this German team can probably qualify with uh, both legs tied together and one hand tied behind their backs. Given the qualification, it's top three. It's absolutely ridiculous. So there's no issue of us not making the finals in France in 2016. So if the tournament is the way it works out and Germany win it, Joachim Löw can happily retire and say to all of the doubters, and I will include myself amongst those doubters, you know what? I was right in the end, and uh, I'll have no argument with that, because all I want to see is this team win, and that's what I wanted to see this year. Yogi Love, he changed his tactics, he adapted them, he didn't quite say, I'm giving up to you, the media and the fans and all the naysayers and all the complainers. He took the criticism, he took it openly, he took it honestly, changed the formation, then he stuck with where he was going. He knew what the mission was, and the mission has been achieved. The fourth star has been won. Germany are world champions. And let's just bask in that glory. So you will might see a few more videos from me as the summer goes on. You'll certainly see a lot more articles as we uh, start uh, analysing the World Cup and we start uh, digging about. You'll see a few features. I've got a feature planned for one on Joachim Löw. One on Bastian Schweinsteiger. Of course, you probably have read the feature already on Thomas Müller. And I might even uh, do one on Mario Götze if I have the time to... Based around all the time I have and all the other projects, it's going to be a bit busy. But uh, I'll certainly try and keep things up to date. So, until the hat-eating episode, which you'll probably see in the next couple of days, I will say, sit back, enjoy wherever you are. This is absolutely fantastic weather where I am at the moment. So hopefully it's the same way you are. So enjoy. You probably endured 20 minutes of me babbling away. So now have a nice chilled beer now. Relax. Enjoy the rest of the day. So until next time, viel Glück und bis bald. Wir sind Weltmeister. Ciao.